Good morning. Welcome, Grid Church. Hey, we're so excited that you're here, that you clicked that link this morning and decided to join us. I'm going to actually turn it over to our team this morning to start us in some amazing worship, and I get the privilege of being back in just a moment to bring the talk.
It is so good to be able to have the privilege to bring the talk this morning. If you're new with us, we're in the book of James right now. And here at the Grid Church, we pick a book of the Bible and we talk through it and we look at it and we dive into what it's saying to us and how we can apply it to our lives. So right now, we're in the book of James, and if you know anything about James, you know that it is an amazing book. So today, if you're taking notes out there um, and want to follow along, text will also be on the screen as we go. But this morning, we're going to be in James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27, and I titled today's talk, Listen and Obey. Listen and Obey. And I took this phrase from our very own home, actually. So if you are in our home for any amount of time, you will hear this phrase, listen and obey. And it's it obviously is a serious thing, but it's kind of turned into a fun thing. We make jingles out of it. Um, so listen and obey all started. We have four children, six, well, actually the oldest just turned seven. That's crazy, but we have four children, seven and under. And this phrase, listen and obey, is just kind of something that caught on and it's second nature. And now if you ask our kids, if we say, what are the two words you need to remember? They'll say, listen and obey. They just know that that's it. And this is just something that we instilled in our home um, starting when they were younger because it's the concept of when mom and dad talk, it's not enough to just listen, right? So we say something and what's that phrase? In one ear and out the other, right? So they listen and it just goes away, right? But listen and obey, that actually calls for an action. It calls for a response. And so we um, often take walks around our neighborhood and sometimes we'll let them ride the scooter or the bikes or when they were little, you know, they'd be in the double stroller, but now we're giving more freedom and so um, specifically Jack, he's three, he's at that age that he really wants to walk. He doesn't really want to ride in the stroller anymore, so he'll, he'll have his little balance bike. And so every block there's like an alley, and so we've trained them, you have to stop before you get to the alley because there could be a car coming and you have to wait so we can all cross together. So as this is something that they're learning, we're always like listen and obey because if they just hear the instruction, stop before you get to the alley, they listen to it. But if they don't obey it, what could happen? Obviously it can be dangerous. So now they know, listen and obey. And so the older kids will say to Jack, Jack, did you listen and obey? So listen and obey, it's a big phrase in our home. And today actually we're gonna look at this text from James, um, chapter one, verses 19 to 27. And we're gonna dive in and we're gonna see how this talk really looks at the word of God and how we as Christians should not only listen, but we should obey. And this morning we're going to pick out three things that are just challenges for us this morning. So if you're following along or it'll be on the screen, the first one this morning is we must be receptive to God's word. We're going to pick this up in verse 19 this morning. Follow along with me. James says, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. That word receive, in order to receive and to be receptive to God's word, he lays out for us a few areas of our life that we need to develop and that we need to get in check. Let's look at them this morning. So in order to be receptive to God's word, we must develop a capacity to listen. He says, let every person be quick to hear. I don't know how many of you ever have a friend that they talk a lot. I tend to be that friend that has a lot of words to say. Um, talking is okay, but what if that person that is talking doesn't listen, right? What if that person, they think that they know it all or they're constantly interrupting or um, injecting things into the conversation and they're not really listening. It gets frustrating, right? It gets annoying. You're like, did you even hear what I was saying? And so I think about that in our relationship with God and about how the, so many times we go to God with so many words. We go to God with a whole list. Did you ever do that? There's nothing wrong with a prayer list and 
the Bible says to bring your needs to God, but what if we spend all our time just talking and what if we're not quick to listen? What if we just like blow through our list and are like, boop, check that off for the day and we move on and we miss this very important key element that says, let every person be quick to hear, be quick to listen, right? What does God want to speak to you today? What does he want to speak to you through his word? And if we're not quick to, to stop, to pause the busyness, the noise, and to listen, we will miss that. Proverbs 12, 15 says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Do you have, do you have a heart? Do you have ears that are listening that are, I want to be wise. I want to be someone that listens to others, that listens to God, that um, closes my mouth so I can hear, right? It's such a challenge to us this morning. Be quick to listen. Maybe you feel like you're in a season of your life that you feel like you're not hearing from God and you're like, God, why are you silent? I just challenge you this morning to maybe think about the last time that you just sat and quieted yourself with his word and asked asked him to speak, kind of quieted the noise of this life and quieted your own heart and your own list and your own ideas and asked him to speak to you. He wants to speak to you and he desires to speak to us, but we have to be quick to listen. The second thing that we must develop is a controlled tongue. James says, be slow to speak. This is something that in a few weeks, we are gonna tackle an entire talk on the tongue. And I'm so excited about that. There's an entire section of James just dedicated to the tongue and it's gonna be powerful. But let's look at what Psalm 141.3 says. It says, take control of what I say, O Lord, and guard my lips. And in Proverbs 21.23, whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. I know we probably all had a time in our life that our mouths got us into trouble and we overshared or we stuck our foot in our mouth. And isn't it so true that this <laughs> can be a tool? It can be a tool for good. It can be a tool for evil. And James gives a warning and he says, be slow to speak. So be quick to hear, be slow to speak, the third thing he says is slow to become angry. So this third area we need to develop is a calm demeanor, a demeanor of peace, a demeanor of calm. If you ever have been around someone that has a really short fuse, or maybe that's you yourself, you know that sometimes that, that anger can rise up and it's like it just takes control in the moment and the, the temper flares and so many times things might be said, you know, that are unkind or even untrue and it's hard to take those things back. So the word cautions us, be slow, be slow to speak, be slow to become angry. It says, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Wow. I want to be someone that the righteousness of God is produced within me. I want that to flow through me and, and anger does not produce that. Look at it in Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 and don't sin. Wow. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry for anger gives a foothold to the devil. That's powerful, right? Anger is a big emotion. Anger is an emotion that we all have as humans, but the word says that anger, anger can give a foothold to the devil in your life. So be very cautious and be very careful and check yourself, check your spirit. If you just kind of, you know, jokingly chalk it up to like, oh, they know I have a big temper or, you know, they know that'll set me off quick. Check yourself because do you want to be known as someone that just has a short fuse and can go off about anything and the anger really can control you? Do you want to be known as someone that holds a grudge? All of these things, they can allow the devil to have a foothold in our life. And James is challenging us this morning. In order to be receptive to God's word, we need to pause, be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to become angry. And let's look at this fourth area. 
develop a clean life. Verse 21 says, therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness. Let's look at Hebrews chapter four. It shares what the word of God is. Verse 12, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The word of God <laughs> slices and dices, man. It cuts into the very core of who we are. It reveals truth. It speaks truth and it reveals those things within us. So we need to develop a clean life as we are receptive to God's word. The word will pull out those things that are buried deep within us if we allow it to, if we open his word, if we close our close our mouth, if we're quick to listen, slow to become angry and defensive, and just allow the Lord to purge those things out of us. Ephesians 6, 17, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is quite literally a weapon, a weapon that the Lord has given us in this in this day and age we live in, we are constantly fighting a spiritual battle. And if we do not have his word as a weapon, then what do we have? I want to encourage you today. Are there things or even maybe people in your life that need to be cut out that this morning you feel challenged as we're looking at his word, that there's areas of your life that you've kind of shoved down but that the Lord is calling you this morning. He's calling you to develop a clean life. Put away filthiness this morning because it says, so that you can receive with meekness. Another translation says, so that you can receive humbly, so that you can humbly accept the word. I want to be able to accept the word of God into my life and into my heart and let it in. And this word accept, it can be translated to welcome. To welcome means to show hospitality. Think of it like welcoming someone in your home, that hospitable action. That is what it's referring to here. Humbly accept, not just slap open the word and like, okay, but accept the word with hospitality, just with a welcome and an open arm, like, God, I want your word. I want what you have to say to me. I want it to reveal things in my life and to change me. Do you have that, that attitude towards the word of God this morning? So number one this morning, we need to be receptive to God's word. Not only do we need to be receptive, but number two this morning, we must be submissive to God's word. Let's pick it up in verse 22. James says, this is such a well-known verse, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away and once forgets what he looks like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. I want to be blessed this morning. How about you? This morning, I want to be a doer of the word, not just to hear. And let's look at this idea of submitting to the word. What does submitting mean? Submitting simply means to obey. Another definition is to yield your desires to someone or something else. So how do we submit to the word of God? How do we not just hear it? How do we submit? In verse 22, we see that submission requires a response. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. How do we submit to God's word? We respond. We simply respond to it. It's a call to action. Luke eleven twenty-eight 28 says, Jesus replied, these are Jesus' words, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it in to practice. I know there's so many Christ followers, people who claim to be Christians that know about the Bible, that maybe they can even quote Bible verses, but it's just such a passing thought and it doesn't actually overflow into how they live. 
They could quote the verses all day, but when it comes to living so much of their actions and their fruit are contrary to what the word of God says. And the scripture is clear. By being hearers only, you're deceiving yourselves. You're deceiving yourself into thinking that everything's okay. Oh, because yeah, you know, I, I listened to that sermon or yeah, like I listened to that podcast or I know John 3, 16, but, but are you hearers only or are we doers this morning? Let's look at verses 23. James uses this metaphor to describe this. He, he talks about this mirror and that this idea of a man walking up to a mirror and then when he walks away, he so quickly forgets what he saw, the truth of his reflection. I was thinking about this, <laughs> what this would be like if I stay home with our four kids. And I was just thinking about, there's so many times where my day gets so crazy that it will be say like halfway through the day. And I will like go into the bathroom and like happen to catch a glance of myself <laughs> in the mirror. And I'm like, whoa, what is happening? And it's, frightening and what if I walked away from that moment and say like I was supposed to go on a hot date that night with my hubby and I clearly saw the situation going on and I walked away and I literally didn't address a single issue he comes home from work and I'm like ready to go <laughs> I can just imagine his face but that's literally what it would be like it would be like looking at yourself in the mirror seeing the truth but walking away and not addressing a single thing pretending like quite literally everything is okay and James cautions us this morning that that's what it's like that's what it's like when we read the word and we see the truth of scripture and the truth exposes things in our life and we see that and we feel that and we're convicted and we walk away we put the word down and we walk away and we live and we live our life and we go on our own way. That's, that's exactly what he's talking about this morning. He says, you're deceiving yourselves. If you can look at the truth of scripture, if you can open the word of God, if he can speak to you and you can feel that and you can be like, whoa, and walk away as if it never happened. Psalm 119 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. We must be submissive to God's word. It's not enough to just be receptive. It's not enough to just be submissive. But number three this morning, we must be moved. We must be moved by God's word. Let's look at verse 26. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. This text is basically saying that you can have all of the knowledge. You can know all of the verses. You can hear all of the sermons. But if that knowledge isn't active in your life and doesn't call cause you to be moved toward action it's worthless if our kids listen to our instruction we're riding down the sidewalk and we say guys wait stop before the alley and they listen but they are not moved to action it is worthless they can go out into that alley there could be a car coming there could be danger if we have the knowledge, but do not act and move, there's two keys. It's listening and obeying. It's not enough to just listen. Do the things that break God's heart break your heart? Can you just walk around in your daily life and see things and not feel, not feel that pull, that nudge? Maybe you just think in your head like, oh, like I'll pray for them or, you know, oh man, that stinks. But do you feel a call to action? Do you feel moved by that? Do the things that break God's heart break yours? He says here, religion that is pure and undefiled before God is this, 
to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. There is action here. There is reaching outside of yourself and of your world and reaching others with the love of Jesus. This is why we do I Love My City here at the Grid Church, to get outside of the walls of our comfortable lives, of the Grid Church, and to go to people that need so desperately the love of Jesus tangibly through our actions, through our encouragement. If you listen and you hear and you see, but you don't act, the scripture says it's worthless. Truth must move us to action. It's a call this morning to wake up, church, wake up. We must be moved. And if we are not moved, if we are so comfortable and listening and taking notes and going about our life on autopilot, then we are missing it. The word is filled with truth. The word is filled with, with calls to action, calls to rid our lives of things, cause to look around and open our eyes and share the love of Jesus. And if we have all that knowledge in here and are just on autopilot, we are missing it. This morning, this is an encouragement and a call to be moved, to change the way we talk, to change the way that we walk. When his scripture, when his words go deep, when we are slow to speak, <laughs> when we are quick to listen, slow to become angry as the word reveals stuff in us and you start to get defensive, I caution you, slow down. Be slow to anger. Let his word do the work in you so that it can move you toward change, toward action. Psalm 119, guide my steps by your word so I will not be overcome by evil. Guide my steps by your word so I will not be overcome by evil. That should be all of our prayer this morning. This is a call this morning for the church. This is a call for Christians. This is a call for the unbeliever. And maybe you have heard these verses. Maybe you have sat in church for a long time and you've never acted on it. You've never made a decision to actually make Jesus the Lord of your life and to do a 180 and to walk after him. This is a call this morning to reflect to reflect and to say, God, open up my heart. Let the truth of your word penetrate my heart this morning. Let it reveal areas to me. We should be on a daily basis asking the Lord to, to reveal areas to us that maybe we don't know, or maybe are hidden, or maybe the lies of the enemy have crept in and we're believing them. The truth of his scripture is light and it illuminates truth. And those areas of our life that are dark, those dark corners that we try to keep hidden, ask him this morning, let the truth of your word illuminate all the areas of my life. Bring things to the surface that need to be purged. Speak into my heart, open up my eyes to see things the way that you see them so that I can be moved to action so that I can not just listen to your word, but that I can obey it and that I can reach people who don't know you. I'll just close with this this morning. This day and age that we are walking in, the word is clear. We are fighting a spiritual battle. You would not walk into a physical battle without your sword. You wouldn't, oopsies, just forgot that at home. No. In the same way, daily as we walk throughout this life, we have got to have the word. It doesn't mean you're walking around with a physical Bible, waving it around all the time. But the scripture is here. I have hidden your word in my heart. I challenge you, get into scriptures. We're going through James and we're in this time of fasting and prayer. Um, something I've been encouraged to do is just reading through James daily. It's only five chapters. Take one chapter, take just a couple verses but get yourself in the word daily. Get that truth flowing through you daily. Maybe you're like, I'm gonna try to memorize a verse this week. Anything just to get that word in you. Hide that word in your heart so that you are walking daily, not in your own flesh, but you are walking in the spirit, ready for spiritual battle, equipped with your sword, equipped with the sword that is the word of God. It's the only thing that brings change.
the only thing that reveals truth in life. This is the only thing that will last for heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will last forever. Can we pray this morning? Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the gift that it is to our life, for the gift, for the truth, Father, I pray this morning that as we have looked at your word, as we've looked at the truth, I ask that it would reach into our hearts this morning. I pray that it would reach areas of our life that God, maybe we've hidden or we've shied away from. Father God, that we would lay our whole self down before you, God, and, and say, examine me. God, look within me. This morning, I want to give an opportunity. If you are watching and you have never made a decision for Jesus, you've never Maybe you've never heard the truth, and this is the first time this morning. Maybe you have heard the truth before, but you haven't responded to it, or maybe even you have responded to it before and you find yourself living in a place that, that you're not living it, that you're not walking in it. This morning, the Lord is here, and He's so ready to have you and he's here with open arms and wherever you're at this morning he's with you and i want to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer the the specific words aren't what change you but the word is clear that as you pray this prayer and you believe it and you by faith declare that jesus is lord and that you want him to be the lord of your life that you believe that jesus was raised from the dead that you will be saved. And I want to give you that opportunity this morning. If that's you, would you pray this prayer with me this morning? Dear God, I come to you right now. I am in need of you. I am a sinner. I ask that you would come into my heart, that you would work in my life, that you would cleanse me, that you would fill me, that you would free me. God, I want to live for you forever. In Jesus name amen amen that is so incredible if you prayed that prayer this morning and you have some questions or you maybe don't know what the next step is there's a number below that you can text in and we will be able to connect with you this week and answer any questions you have maybe get a Bible into your hands and just walk with you on the next steps of this journey it is so amazing and I just want you to know that you don't have to do life alone we at the grid church are here and we want to come and we want to walk alongside of you if it is your very first time that you tuned in with us this morning we want to say thank you there's also a link down below that you can click to get connected with us maybe find out a little bit more info about the grid we would love the opportunity to hear your story and share a little bit of ours and just get to know you this week as well as I shared about I Love My City, and we have such an amazing opportunity to reach people with the love of Jesus. If you want more info on how to get involved with that, there's a link below with more info that you can reach out and find out when we're going out and the times and a way to get involved there. And lastly, if you call the Grid Church your home, we are your family and you are supporting all that God is doing here, we want to say thank you. Your generosity and support is making such a huge difference. As a matter of fact, this week we were just able to purchase several cases of hand warmers to go take out to the streets for I Love My City for, for people who don't have that. And I just wanna say thank you because you are making a difference. And truly the Lord is just smiling on you and your generosity and your gifts. So thank you. There's a link below to continue to be faithful in that. But I hope that you have an amazing week, church. We love you. We are praying for you. We are here for you. Do not hesitate to reach out. And next Sunday, this is so exciting, will be the Grid Church's two-year birthday. Woo-woo! We're turning two next week, so get your party pants ready. Um, we're going to have some fun things planned for next week. And we love you so much. We hope to see you soon. Have a blessed week.
tight 